In this movie, we're going to troubleshoot DHCP. If you want to learn more, please go to itdvds.com, where our members get unlimited access to all of our training, as well as study aids like practice tests for our certification training. So let's begin the sample. So I've got a Windows 10 client here that should be using DHCP. It's having trouble getting on the network, so we need to troubleshoot DHCP. First thing we'll want to do is probably go to our network connection. So I'll just right click on the start button, go to network connections, and make sure our Ethernet cable, cable is actually plugged in. So if it wasn't, we'd see a red X here. Make sure it's not disabled or anything like that. If it's a Wi-Fi connection, we can go down here and check our Wi-Fi connection. Make sure it's actually connected to a Wi-Fi network. If it is, the next step is going to be to go to the properties of the Ethernet connection or the Wi-Fi connection. Go to IP version 4, go to properties. Make sure it's set to obtain an IP address automatically. Sometimes static IP addresses have been configured. We move to another network and obviously that static IP address won't work on another network, most likely. So we need to switch it back to obtain an IP address automatically. If that's set and we're still having problems getting an IP address, we we'll want to right click Run it, run in command prompt as an admin. And we're going to do an IP config space slash all to confirm what's going on here. So we've got our Ethernet adapter, and I can see it is using auto configuration for IP version 4, and we can tell that because the IP address starts with a 169. This means that it was not able to contact a DHCP server, so it uses this auto configuration to just try to get on a network. And it does that so that if there are other computers that are on the same network that we're also not going to be able to contact a DHCP server, then those computers would actually be able to communicate together because they'd both be in this particular subnet. But 99% of the time, that's not what we want. We want to get an IP address from a DHCP server. So this means that it was not able to contact it. So one of the first things we can do, a quick check, is just to run an IP config space slash renew. This will attempt to contact the DHCP server again and get an IP address. Maybe there was some sort of intermittent problem and now things are working fine. We just need to initiate DHCP again to try to get an IP address and that's what this does. Okay, and it took about a minute to come back. It says an error occurred while renewing interface Ethernet, unable to contact your DHCP server. So it seems like we've got a problem. The next question we'll want to ask ourselves is, are other computers able to get on the network and get an IP address from our DHCP server? If no, well then most likely we got an issue with the DHCP server or the network itself. If yes, other computers are able to get an IP address, then well, most likely there's something going on with this particular computer or the switch port that it's connected to on the switch. Or it could even be a problem with the Ethernet cable or the network card itself or the driver. So we need to try to narrow that down a quick easy way to do that is to try to give this computer a static IP address. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the properties of my network card, go to the properties of IP version 4 and give it a static IP address. We want to make sure that this IP address is not currently in use. So I know this IP address is not in use and this is an IP address that's in the subnet that this computer is supposed to be plugged into. So I'll go ahead and click OK, click close, and we can just do an IP config and I'm going to ping the gateway. So I'm going to ping 192.168.6.1. I should be able to ping the gateway. That means, yeah, it successfully got on the network. And I can see, okay, it didn't. Now let's say that it did. It was able to ping the gateway. The next thing I probably want to do is try to ping my DNS server or ping like Google Google.com. If I can ping Google.com, then I'm definitely on the network. I can contact my DHC or my my DNS server and I can get out on the internet at that point in time I'd probably want to go to my DHCP server and try to troubleshoot the problem because this computer would look fine but we can see I was not able to ping it so alright now there's still something going on with this computer at this point in time we'd want to make sure that there wasn't an issue with the Ethernet cable so we would probably want to swap out the Ethernet cable if we're connected to a Wi-Fi network, we might want to disconnect from the Wi-Fi network and reconnect or even reboot the computer to make sure that there wasn't any kind of issue with the driver. It also could be that the port that this computer is connected to is configured to be in a different subnet than we thought. And most likely it's the way it's configured is in a different VLAN. So we'd want to go to the switch that it's connected to and 
most likely we can tell net or SSH into the switch if we're able to do that and check to make sure it's in the proper VLAN. If we're not able to do that, a good way to rule a lot of things out at once is if we have a laptop or some other computer that's close that we can use a different Ethernet cable, connect that computer to this, this port. So unplug this computer, connect the other computer to where this computer was connected to, and then try it out. See if it can get an IP address. If that computer can, then we've definitely narrowed it down to this computer's network card or some other software problem on this computer that's causing a problem. In that case, we'd want to check the event viewer on this particular computer by going to event viewer. And expand it out. Expand out our Windows log. Check out our system log. See if there are any errors. And also our application log. Make sure there are no errors there. Now in my particular case, yeah, the port that it was connected to was in the wrong VLAN. So I corrected that. And now I should be able to go to my network connections and configure it back for DHCP again. And it should get on the network. I can do an IP config. Okay, it did. I got one on 192.168.6.1881. That's the IP address. I can do an IP config space slash all and see, yes, it used the DHCP server 192.168.6.227. So that's one of my DHCP servers. So next, let's say we've determined the problem is not with this comp particular computer. When we gave it a static IP address, it was able to get on the network. So we need to troubleshoot on the DHCP server. Now let's go over to a desktop that can actually connect to our DHCP server. I'm just going to launch our DHCP snap in. Right click, click on add server. And DHCP01 is the server we want to connect to. Let's go ahead and span this out. The first thing we want to do is make sure that it's actually running, the DHCP service. So we'd see a red X here if it was not actually running. In that case, we'd want to right click on it, go to all tasks, and click on start. That would go ahead and start the DHCP server service. If it failed to start, then we want to check the event viewer and see why it failed to start. If we just built this DHCP server, then there's a chance it's not authorized. We want to right click on it, click on authorize, and that'll go ahead and authorize it. And of course, set up our DHCP scopes. Now the scope, we want to make sure that there is one for the particular subnet we're trying to work with. For example, the subnet I'm working with is 192.168.6.0, so there is a scope here. We want to make sure it's active. It would be a little red down arrow if for some reason it got deactivated, then it would not hand out IP addresses for this particular subnet. And that could be the issue. In that case, we can right click on it and click on activate. Mine's currently active, so the only option is deactivate. The next thing we'd want to check is to make sure that there are actually IP addresses in the IP address pool. There's a chance that all the IP addresses got handed out, so there's no more available. So that's why our DHCP client can't get an IP address. So we can check this by right-clicking on our scope. Click on Display Statistics. This will show us the total addresses, the amount in use, and the amount available. If the amount available is zero, then we know we ran out of IP addresses. And in that case, we need to right-click on our scope, go to Properties, and increase the size of the pool. Now, if we only have 30 DHCP clients, but we've got 100 IP addresses in the pool, we'd want to take a look at our address leases and see if there are a lot of computers that disconnected incorrectly or disconnected in a way that the lease didn't get removed. In that case, if that happens on a regular basis, we want to lower the lease duration so that those leases are removed on a regular basis because the client's been disconnected. And that will help prevent us from running out of IP addresses. So now if the DHCP server is running, we've got a scope for the subnet, and there's IP addresses available in the address pool. The next thing we want to try to figure out is, is, okay, what's going on? There's something else going on. We want to go to the properties of IP version 4 here. Make sure we have enabled DHCP audit logging. So this will try to help us troubleshoot. If we go over to advanced, we can see exactly where the logs are. They're in C Windows System 32 DHCP. So let's take a look at those. So here I am on the C drive of DHCP01, Windows System 32 DHCP. 
Here are our logs, our audit logs. And you can see they're separated by day of the week. And then for IP version 6, they've got a V6 in the name. So let's take a look at one of these here. We can see the event ID, what it means, and down here are the actual events. So this can tell us kind of if something happened that failed. If I scroll down here, we can see a lot of successes, so that's good. Most likely, if we're having the problem right now, we'd want to scroll down to the bottom and see, okay, something like DNS update failed for this particular computer. So now we want to try to figure out why. If it was a DNS issue, we're probably going to have to go to the DNS server to figure it out, but we could also potentially figure it out on our uh, DHCP server here. But if there's some other error, then we'd want to look on our DHCP server in the event viewer. So let's go ahead and connect to DHCP01. I'm going to right click on it, server manager here, open up computer management. I'll just expand this out, expand out our event viewer. Now we could look certainly in our application and system log. That's a good place to look. Most likely though, we'll want to look in our applications and service logs. And then Microsoft, Windows, and we'll just scroll down to DHCP server. And we've got a couple different logs here. We've got the admin log, audit logs, debug logs, filter notifications, and operational. So the first thing we might want to look is in our admin log, try to see what's going on, see if there are any errors here. I can see, okay, there was a problem with my partner server here for our failover relationship, so that could be causing the problem. So the next place we might want to look here is our filter notifications. See if we have any filters set up. So for example, DHCP services were denied to machine with hardware address, and we can see the MAC address here. And it's for desktop 122 because it was in the deny list. And this might be our problem. Oh, hey, I didn't realize we had uh, you know a deny list, so we can go back to our filters, look and deny. There it is, actually. So I would probably want to right click and delete this deny entry if it wasn't supposed to be there and then that would solve our problem. Next place we can look is in operational logs. So we can see exactly what happened to our DHCP server at a particular time. So if we started having a problem around 9.47 a.m., I can see, oh, the scope 192.168.6.0 was deactivated and we can see who deactivated it. So maybe that's causing our problem. Now these other logs here, we've got audit logs, I've already enabled it, but we do need to enable it, and we can do that by going to View, Show, Analytic, and Debug Logs if we don't see it, first of all, and then right-click and click on Enable Log. Mine's already enabled. Now, we don't want to have it enabled all the time because it does use up resources, so we just want to enable it while we're troubleshooting it, so we can enable it, then try to run like an IP config space slash renew on our DHCP client and see if we get any particular errors in this uh, audit log. Now if we get an error when we try to enable the log we can go to the properties of it and just make sure do not overwrite events is uh, selected. So we'd uncheck this, select it, and check it and click OK and that will prevent that error when we go ahead and enable it. And these will give us some pretty detailed information about what's going on here. Uh, for example a contact message with transaction ID 145 and I can see kind of what happened here if we have any errors or any events that look like they're part of the problem, then they'll help us diagnose what the issue is. Now, if our DHCP server has multiple NICs in it that we're using to connect to multiple subnets so that it can service DHCP clients in those subnets, then we'd want to go to the properties, go to advanced, go to bindings, and make sure those particular NICs are checked so that they are usable for DHCP. If we have multiple subnets we're working with and multiple scopes in that case, for example here we've got a DHCP server, let's say our DHCP clients in subnet B, we want to make sure we have a DHCP relay agent set up so that the broadcast that is the DHCP request actually reaches the DHCP server. And we most likely know if we have a DHCP relay agent problem because all the computers in the particular subnet would not be able to get an IP address but computers in the subnet that the DHCP server is in would be able to get an IP address. In that case, most likely it's a DHCP relay agent problem or we don't have a scope set up for this particular subnet, like subnet B. Now a couple other kind of odd scenarios, but scenarios that can happen is if 
a static IP address is already configured for a computer that that static IP address is part of the DHCP pool. So the DHCP server is trying to hand out that IP address. Well, when it hands out that IP address, then we're going to have an IP address conflict because two computers are going to have the same IP address. In order to help prevent that, we can go to the properties of IP version 4 here, go to advanced, and set the conflict detection attempts to something like 1 or 2. And when we do this, the DHCP server is going to try to ping the IP address it's about to hand out. So if the ping comes back successful, then it knows, hey, that IP address is in use. It's not going to hand that particular IP address out. But it's important to know when we do set this, it does make a little bit of a delay for the DHCP for server to respond because it has to wait for the ping to fail before it hands the, the IP address out. So if we set this up too high, you know, like 5, then it's going to take potentially 5 seconds for the DHCP server to respond to the DHCP client. And that's normally not what we want. So 1 or 2 is normally a good setting. Another possibility is if we have multiple DHCP servers set up and the scope overlaps. And what that means is that, say for example, 192.168.6.0, this scope is set up on another DHCP server as well, and the pool that's set up on the other DHCP server has IP addresses that are also in this particular pool, and there's no exclusion range set up for those IP addresses. Well, in that case, both, both DHCP servers are trying to hand out the same IP addresses. Well, if they do, then those two computers that get those IP addresses will have IP address conflicts, and that will cause those computers not to be able to communicate properly on the network. So in that case, we'd want to create exclusion ranges for those IP addresses on at least one of the DHCP servers. Microsoft Message Analyzer is a great tool we can use to analyze network traffic that can help us troubleshoot all kinds of network problems. So in our example, we're just going to do DHCP. But again, it's very helpful for getting low-level information to see what the network traffic is actually doing. And a lot of times that gives us information that can help us troubleshoot the problem. So I just went ahead and searched for Microsoft Me Message Analyzer, and I'm going to go ahead and download it. And I'm going to download the 64-bit version because I'm running on a 64-bit version of Windows 10. Now we can run this on a server operating system as well. See, I'll just save it to I'll save it to my desktop. And you can also run it on server core. If we need to analyze the traffic for a nano server, we can run this on like our Windows 10 machine and remotely capture the traffic on nano. Okay, it's finished downloading. I'm going to go ahead and just launch the installer. Now with the latest versions of Windows 10 as of the making of this movie, during the installer, just on Windows 10, not on server, but uh, you get an error about an unsigned driver. So in order to get it to work, you have to disable secure boot on Windows 10. But again, that's not with the server operating system. Go ahead and click Next. And do we want to optimize Message Analyzer for data capture? Yes, I'll go ahead and do that. And Install. Of course, this particular computer was having problems getting on the network. We could put this installer on like a thumb drive and copy it over to the desktop that way. Okay, and the installation's complete. Now we can specify when it's online if it wants to update automatically. I'll just like do not update. And there it is. If we want to install it on a server core installation, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. Let's go ahead and open up Explorer here. For example, DHCP01 is a server core installation. And I could copy it to a folder or just I'll just copy it to my C drive. And here we are on DHCP01. And I'll go ahead and just run the MSI. And the installer is exactly the same. Now normally we probably want to install this on our client and analyze the traffic from there and potentially if we need to uh, remotely analyze the traffic from our server without actually installing a message analyzer on it on our server. But there are times when we do or need to install it on the server in order to test things out or troubleshoot a problem. Okay, and it's installed.
And there it is. So we see we can run it on server core also. Now let's use message analyzer to try to solve a problem here. And we're going to use DHCP as an example, but it could be used for, again, really pretty much any network problem. So first of all, I'm going to open up a command prompt as an admin, and I'm going to do an IP config space slash release. So I'm going to release the IP address it had, and we're going to see DHCP working so we can see what it looks like, and then we'll break it, and we can see what it looks like when it doesn't work. So let's launch our message analyzer. I'll go ahead and type it in. There it is. I'm going to right-click on it, run it as administrator. Click yes. All right, and let's just do a local trace here. So I'll click on start local trace. That's going to start capturing packets. And let's go back to our command prompt. And I'm going to do an IP config space slash renew. This is going to kick off the DHCP process. And we can see, okay, it worked. It grabbed an IP address. And there it is. We can see the packets start coming in. I'm going to go ahead and click on stop to stop the capture. And I'm going to go up here and sort it by module. This can make it a little bit easier to look at because we can see there's a lot of different types of traffic coming through here. And let's we're looking for DHCP. There it is. Now, if we remember our DHCP process, the DHCP client broadcasts a DHCP discover message out, trying to look for a DHCP server. It broadcasts out on 255.255.255.255. DHCP server gets it, sends back a DHCP offer. Then the client, again, sends back a DHCP request saying, all right, Give me an IP address and any other parameters, and then the DHCP server sends back an acknowledgement to the DHCP client. So we should see that. And here it is. So here it is. We're sending out a DHCP discover, and you can see the source is 0.0.0.0. .0. That's because this computer doesn't have an IP address yet, so that's what it's using, and it sends it out to the broadcast. Then we've got a couple different situations here. We've got... Dot two two five, which is DHCP zero one, sending back a DHCP offer. We've got two two seven, which is another DHCP server. DHCP zero two, sending back a DHCP offer. And then down here, we actually have one nine two dot one six eight dot six dot one, sending back another DHCP offer. So I actually have three DHCP servers on my network, sending back an offer, saying, "Hey, you can use me as a DHCP server if you want to." Then it sends back a DHCP request. Again, broadcasting it out. And then it's actually DHCP02 that sends back the acknowledgement. And we can confirm that. If we go back here to an IP config space slash all, that DHCP02.227 is, in fact, uh, the one that gave it the IP address. So pretty cool. We can see the whole process here. And this goes, you can see all the other different uh, protocols we're working with here. And if we highlight one of these and we go down here to details, we can actually see the details of that packet here. So we can see your IP, 192.168.6.181. Remember, this is DHCP02 sending it back to this computer. And that, in fact, was the IP address we got. And if we go down here and expand it out further, we go into options. Here's the different options that were sent back. So you can see like domain name server. These are our name servers that it, it received. So this is what it looks like when DHCP is working. Now let's go ahead and break it. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And let's go ahead and release this IP address again. And I'm going to put this computer in a different VLAN that does not have a DHCP server. Okay, I've done that. Now it doesn't have a DHCP server. Let's go ahead and start a local trace again. And I'm going to do an IP config space slash renew. So that's going to eventually time out. It's going to take a while. I'm going to sort it by module. You can see we're sending out, well, a bunch of discover packets. So that's the first step. Now we're waiting for a response from a DHCP server. So you can see it keeps on sending out Discover, saying, hey, any DHCP server out there? Any DHCP server out there? And there isn't one. So this would tip us off and say, 
okay, the DHCP discover is most likely not getting to the DHCP server. So, you know, maybe we need to set up a DHCP relay agent or obviously there's some sort of uh, disconnection there or if it is the DHCP server certainly isn't responding so that's message analyzer it works very well uh, and really helpful for diagnosing kind of low-level network problems so all these troubleshooting steps will solve pretty much any problem we'll run into with DHCP so if you want to learn more about DHCP or if you're studying for exam 70-741 Please go to itdvds.com where we have that training as well as a ton of other training. And as a member of itdvds.com, you get access to all of it as well as practice tests for our certification training.